hello to the First Baptist family and to the friends of First Baptist Tulsa. So here's our 321 for February 23rd, 2022. So here's three things I want you to know, and these all have to do with the month of March. Uh, March 2nd begins the season of Lent uh, on Ash Wednesday. And this is something that typically more liturgical denominations and churches do, but we've adopted this in recent years because all Lent is, and that word Lent comes from an old English word that means lengthen. So here the, the days in the spring are beginning to lengthen, they're getting longer. And Lent is a season of repentance. Uh, the 40 or so days before Easter, it's a time to position our hearts, uh, to make sure that we are right before God, to do a little spring cleaning of the soul. And that begins for us on Ash Wednesday, which is March 2nd this year. So we have three Ash Wednesday service times at 7 a.m., at noon, and at 5 o'clock in our worship center downtown. Uh, there'll be a short liturgy of repentance and then an opportunity to be given ashes on your forehead as a sign, as an outward sign of repentance, that this begins that season for us. So that's March 2nd. March 6th, uh, Oklahoma Baptist Symphony is performing in our worship center that Sunday evening, so I want to invite you to that. Um, music washes from the soul the dust of everyday life, said one uh, great thinker. And so music just has a way of washing over us and reminding us of the beauty of life. And then during the entire month of March, our Caring Center, and I'm going to make sure I get this right, I have my notes here, Caring Center is going to be uh, collecting new and gently used athletic shoes in all sizes for men, women, and children. And so if you have shoes around the house that you've outgrown or not no longer using, or you want to go out and buy some shoes, give those to our Caring Center, and they will be put to good use for those folks coming into our ministry. So those are the three things I want you to know. Two chapters of the Bible I would invite you to read, and it would be Exodus 19 and Exodus 20. And so we're working our way uh, as the Israelites come out of Egyptian slavery, as they're making their way into the desert, getting ready to go to the Holy Land, their first stop is to come to Mount Sinai, okay? And this is where God is going to give them the law. And so here's a couple of things to, to note in Exodus 19. First of all, I want you to notice a couple of phrases. Um, in verse 4, uh, God says, I, I Remember what I did in Egypt, how I carried you on eagles' wings. We hear that so often. I actually tried to unpack a little bit about what that phrase means in the Bible. And for the Hebrews, they were very astute bird watchers, and they would note that eagles having their nest high would push their young out. But as their young were learning how to fly, the, the mother or the father eagle would swoop under them. And so if they weren't quite able to get altitude, if they weren't quite able to, to flap sufficiently, um, that mother or father eagle was not going to let their, their baby, their hatchling, crash. That, that eagle would catch their young on their wings, lift them up, help them try again. So essentially God is saying, I've got you. I'm underneath you at all times, right? So remember what I did in Egypt, how I carried you on eagle, eagle's wings and brought you to myself. This is ultimately where God wants to take all of us, okay? We wonder what goal do we have in life. God wants to bring us to himself, that he wants to bring us to the, the depth of a richness of relationship with him that goes on to eternity. So if you wonder where all this is going, God is bringing you to himself. So that's Exodus 19. Uh, by the way, there's one more thing in Exodus 19 that I think is worth pointing out in verse 8 as the people are ready to receive the law, as they're getting themselves ready to receive the law. In verse 8, they said, we will do whatever the Lord says. But before God gives his commands, they say yes. What a great way of looking at obedience, that, that as uh, maybe you begin a day, say, God, before you even ask whatever you're going to ask me today, the answer is going to be yes. I think it's one thing to obey after God has given us commands, but how much deeper is that obedience when we say yes before God gives his commands? Because we trust him and whatever he asks is for good. So then we get into chapter 20. This is one of two places in the Older Testament where the Ten Commandments are found. The other is in Deuteronomy chapter 5. And so basically one way of looking at the Ten Commandments is they are commentary on the two great commandments. 
What did, what did Moses give that great commandment? And Jesus amended it just a bit. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so the first four commandments really have to do with our relationship with God, and the final six commandments have to do with loving our neighbor instead of being a taker, how to, how to be generous and how to give, right? So as you read the Ten Commandments, and I would encourage you to take a time of repentance, speaking of Lent, Take a time of repentance as you go through these Ten Commandments, but realize they're within the framework of what it means to have a right relationship with God and what it means to be in a good relationship with other people. Those four and six commands of loving God and loving people. So here's the one way I'd ask you to pray uh, this next week. There seems to be, and we experienced it again on Sunday, just a season of vitality and people uh, seeking spiritually the, the things of God, the, the follow-up room uh, after our second service especially was, was full of people just having this yearning for God. Uh, this year so far we, we have a goal to baptize 60 people uh, and this year from September to September we just passed the 30 mark that we're halfway through our goal of, of wanting to see 60 people come to Christ and be baptized. Would you just pray that this spiritual vitality would continue? It's not anything that we can engineer. It's not anything we can force to happen. We're trying to be faithful to God, faithful to the message of the gospel, faithful to reach out to people and to minister. And prayerfully, hopefully, God will be bringing people to us that, that we can share the gospel with, the life in Christ, the life that exists only in Him. So would you just pray for that vitality to continue in our church? And while you're at it, Pray for that vitality to continue in your own life, that you would be fully awake and fully aware as to what God is doing and where He wants you to go. I love being your pastor. I love serving this church. May the Lord bless you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.